So we've done chapter books and we have done picture books. So I'm going to do kind of the category right in between those two. These are emergent reader. So they're, they're technically chapter books, but they're pretty short. A lot of these are younger, more mid elementary range, like second to fourth grade books. These all have a lot of books in their series. These ones are just the fiction ones. I'll do a nonfiction segment later. So we're going to start with the Encyclopedia Brown series. If you like One Minute Mysteries, this is the same vein except for kids. It's about Encyclopedia Brown and his friend Sally and they solve mysteries. Some of the mysteries are just, I can't find my marble. Some of them are with his father and they're more of someone stole something. There's probably 20 some books in these series. Very easy to read, very entertaining. If you're worried you're not gonna get the mystery right, they have all the answers in the back. And if you're like me, you always cheat and look ahead. Encyclopedia Brown is by Donald Sobel. I'm just gonna do a really brief overview of both of these because I wanna do more in depth. These are Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys. One was originally written for boys, one was originally written for girls. No matter what gender you are, you will like them. Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys both have an older kids series as well. Those ones are more for junior high, high school. These ones are definitely lower elementary. They're about Nancy and the Hardy Boys. They just solve mysteries. They usually get knocked out once or twice per book. They're quite entertaining. Nancy Drew is Carolyn Keene. Hardy Boys are by Franklin W. Dixon. This is Junie B. Jones, really good for first and second grade. There is a bunch of them. They start out with Junie B. Jones in kindergarten and then Junie B. Jones goes up to first grade. They're about Junie B. Jones who can be sort of a pill. She's a very normal, entertaining kindergartner and first grader and her just average adventures throughout the world. They're easier to read than Magic Treehouse books are. So if you have a kid who likes Magic Treehouse but can't quite read them yet, this is a good place to start. Very funny. Junie B. Jones is wildly entertaining. They have audiobooks with her and those are also a good time to listen to if you're stuck in the car or you just need something to put in. Junie B. Jones is by Barbara Park. The Boxcar Children is a series. The first one is not really a mystery, but then the rest of them are. The first one is where they're running away because they don't want to be found by their grandfather. Later books in the series are the Boxcar Children solving mysteries all around the world. They're a very sweet family. They don't have tons of personality. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest is Henry and then there's Jesse, Violet, and Benny. They all work together really well. They have a dog named Watch who's very sweet. Their mysteries are not difficult. They're not scary mysteries. They're just pleasant things that you can figure out. Boxcar Children are by Gertrude Chandler Warner. They have over I think a hundred books in their series. You can almost always find a Boxcar Children at Goodwill for about 50 cents. <laughs> They're really worth it. These are the Pixie Hollow Fairies. These have their own movie series that go with them. There's not that many of these in the series. They're the Disney Fairies. The most well-known fairy is Tinkerbell. This one briefly has Peter Pan, but the rest of them just take place throughout Neverland. They go to the Mermaid Lagoon. Occasionally Captain Hook is in them. They also have two larger books that go with them. And the thing about these two books is the illustrations are beautiful. I think it's watercolor. I Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. Even if you think the pixie fairies are beneath you, the pictures are really worth watching. I think they're by a bunch of different authors. They're all known under the Disney fairy logo. I've already talked about Magic School Bus and my picture books. They also have a short series of chapter books. They're still written by Joanna Cole. They all have a lot of nonfiction information just like the other Magic School Buses, but they're in a chapter book format. Very interesting, very fun. If you like the picture books, you'll also like these ones. This is a lesser known series. This is called Andrew Lost. They are kind of hard to find. The Southern County Library used to have them for a bit. I think they got rid of most of them. They're a big series, but with four books in each series. So like um, Andrew Lost on the Dog is where Andrew shrinks down to microscopic size. And there's four books where he's this size. The next series in the series has Andrew in an, I believe, underwater in a submarine. Also science, um, it's Andrew and his cousin, and they go on adventures. These ones are more, they have like Captain Underpants language, where it's a lot of kind of icky stuff that it's not inappropriate, but it's just kind of gross. So a lot of gross humor more in these ones. Andrew Loss is by J.C. Greenberg. And this is the Horrible Harry series. They are about Harry, who is a horrible... Uh, third grader and fourth grader. He's very entertaining. His best friend, his name is Doug. Doug is a long sufferer. Harry is mostly trying to impress his friend Song Lee. Harry is always up to something. His teacher is the best teacher on the planet, so I love to read what she is doing in her class of only six kids. Terrible Harry is by Susie Klein. One of the best known, best loved children's series of all time is the Magic's Treehouse. These are fabulous. They are 
quick, quick reads. They give you a lot of real information. They are also in books of four. So the first four books of these go together. The next four go together in a different series. They're about two kids, Jack and Annie, who are siblings, and they find a magic treehouse in the woods and a sorceress named Morgan Le Fay owns it and gets to take them on a bunch of adventures. The first 28 are with Morgan Le Fay, and then after that they're Merlin missions. It's the exact same thing, except instead of getting missions from Morgan, they're getting missions from Merlin. Personally, I prefer the Morgan Le Fay ones. However, the best Magic Treehouse book is a Merlin mission, so they're both worth your time. They are by Mary Pope Osborne. Same vein as the Magic Treehouse. This is the Bailey School Kids. This is a group of kids who their town is infested with monsters, at least they think it's infested with monsters. So each book is about a different monster. The first one is called Vampires Don't Wear Polka Dots. They are all by Debbie Dady and Marsha Thornton Jones. Usually what happens is that the kids are like, no, this person can't be whatever monster it is. For in this case, it would be a Martian. And then they find more evidence like, oh, this is why this is happening. This weird thing starts to happen around their town. And by the end of it, they find a way to get rid of the monster or to nullify whatever the monster's doing. And then they all agree that, no, it couldn't have possibly been whatever monster it was. I think there's about five or six friends. They all have different abilities. I really like Aliens Don't Wear Braces. That one's probably my favorite of them all. Okay, the next two are more upper elementary, more fourth and up. We're going to start with Animorphs. Animorphs is a book series that I grew up with and it's one people really like to make fun of. It's about a group of kids who meet an alien and the alien gives them the ability to turn into animals. The covers are amazing because they always start like this and you get to see the progression of the person into a animal. And then they have the beautiful reveal that, oh look, there's the animal and it's actually the person. Word of warning, third book into the series, one of the kids turns permanently into a hawk and is a hawk for the rest of the series. The aliens are at war with another alien race called the Yerks, and Yerks are little slug things that live inside your brain and are taking over. Animorphs has around 50 some books in the series. It's a long haul. It's perfect for right now when you have nothing else to do. They can get kind of exciting. I mean, there is betrayal. There is, <laughs> it's a, it's a ride. These are by K.A. Applegate. The ending is kind of ambiguous, so just be warned for that if you make it through all 50-some books. It's a little disappointing. <laughs> My last series is by the author Erin Hunter. Erin Hunter has written a lot of different series. The one I'm going to talk about is Warriors. She has also written Seekers, which is about polar bears, and she wrote a series about dogs that I cannot think of the title of. This one is Warriors. It's about cats. The first six books follow a cat named Fireheart. The next six books focus on another group of cats and the next six books after that also. I believe there's four series. I could be mistaken. I stopped reading after the third series. I really enjoyed them. I just didn't have time to keep up with them all. They're entertaining. The cats are kind of vicious. So the first series is probably my favorite, but I really enjoy the next two as well. The cats start out though from being kind of just normal house cats, albeit with a religion to having superpowers by the third series, so that's a bit of a trip. I really enjoy the Warrior series. Again, another good one for a lot of time. That's the one we're gonna end on. We're gonna do another segment also with books about this level, but they're gonna be nonfiction or historical fiction. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Sorry to my shelter-in-place people. <laughs>